Senator John McCain has become a vocal critic of the man who defeated him for the presidency. He criticized President Obama's economic recovery plan, and earlier this week he laid into the president for supporting a spending bill loaded with pork after pledging, according to him, to do earmark reform as a candidate. Here's what McCain said today about earmarks in that new spending bill. It's been reported for some, for, uh, by some that I was, quote, angry. I, I'm not nearly as angry as my constituents are. I want to tell you, my constituents are really angry when they see this kind of corruption taking place with the misuse and corruption of their tax dollars that they work so hard for. Yeah, they're angry, and I'm hearing from them by the thousands. Well, does McCain have a case against President Obama when it comes to pork barrel spending? That's the question right now. Is it unusual to see, however, a defeated presidential candidate get so quick into the criticism business? John Hollins with New York Magazine and Chris Elizabeth with TheWashingtonPost.com. John, first point, does he have a case? Uh, you know, Is I, there a lot of crap in these bills that Congress puts in? I saw Thad Cochran, the chief of the appropriators from down south, what, Mississippi? Yeah. Tons of stuff in there just for his state. Well, I mean, look, there is there, there has always been a pork problem in Congress, and there's a lot of pork in this. But didn't uh, this presidential candidate say he was going to go through it line by line and get it out, didn't well, you, he? Well, you know the White House line, right? This is not his budget. This is not his set of it's appropriations. It's not your line, no, my friend. Uh, you know, he, it ain't uh, your line. I, I think that, 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 there's a, that the reality of, of transformational politics and real politics have kind of come to come, come to Well, let's me, cut the right here. You really look, believe they got a case for well, pork? I, I don't, no, I don't think. Look, I think on the substance of the matter, there's a lot of pork in this bill, well, let's get and, it it'd, out. and it'd be great to get it out. I think what Obama would say, and I don't, I look, there's an argument. Why didn't he veto is, the bill? Let's move on. Why didn't he veto and, and, and it? Do, and take and out the right in okay. terms of my budget. Let's go to Chris. Year, Simple question. The president has a veto pen. He promised to go through these bills line by line. The country would be with him a thousand percent. Why doesn't he do it? You know, Chris, because I think, to John's point, I think he wants to move this off his plate. I think it, it's, he's going to say, this is of the past. We're going to reform it going forward. And he knows, in truth, he knows he's got a lot of huge pressing things. The economy, the Dow dropping day by day. Is earmark reform popular? Absolutely. You know, the bridge Don't to nowhere. Don't you think the Dow John would stop dropping if we had a president would stop signing pork bills? Well, Chris, I... As much as earmark reform is popular, I don't think earmark reform is the way in which the economy is going to be fixed. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but I, I do think that what Obama is, is doing is prioritizing. He's saying, look, there's a lot of things I could do. Uh, the economy is the most pressing. You've seen him move on any number of ways to bail out the economic stimulus package, home foreclosures. I think he's focusing on those things and essentially saying, okay, this isn't perfect. I'm signing it. We're going to try and get it right next time. We'll see whether that's acceptable to the people who put him in office. My guess is at least at least in the beginning, he's going to get a little bit of a pass because of the crisis we are in financially. And Chris, you know, you, you know, know the old expression, stuff. even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> but this stuff let's listen to McCain. He's not a broken clock, but let's listen to it because I think he's got a really good point here. Let's listen to him. He lost the election. I don't think he lost this argument. President Obama said during the debate in Oxford, Mississippi, quote, we need earmark reform. And when I'm president, I will go line by line to make sure we're not spending money unwisely. Not surprising, the measure has over 9,000 unnecessarily and wasteful earmarks. So much for the promise of change, Mr. President. So much for the promise of change. Well, that's a tough indictment. Well, look, but Chris, this is this is this stuff is such small potatoes compared to the stuff that's on the president's agenda to actually billion to, to actually fix the economy. Four hundred ten billion that's dollars. Ha that's half of the original tarp, as you know, and probably about a third or, or a quarter of what this we're is eventually going to put in. Spending, by the way, to, this to, is a loan guarantee. We're going to put in to put to okay. fix the banks. I'm my, failing but, to make my point here. But it's it's not it's just that for, from Obama's point of view, it's like let's move on and fix the big stuff. And to your point about Wall Street, um, and you know this is true, Wall, the, the, the stock market doesn't care about the. About the earmarks in the bill. The yeah, stock market, me, me, the stock market cares about, about Tim Geithner and fixing the, the credit system. The argument made this past campaign was that we had irresponsible spending by the federal government for eight years. The Republican Party has confessed to that sin. They've admitted it even at their CPAC convention. Rush Limbaugh and the rest of them admitted it. If that was a sin under the Republicans, irresponsible spending, why isn't it a sin when you're looking at a bill left over from that administration? 
And if you're given part of that irresponsible spending to correct, why don't you correct it when you get a shot at correcting it? My simple question to you, Chris, why not do what you promised to do? Go through it line by line. Why isn't he doing it? I, and by the way, it's a technical question. I don't know why he's not technically doing it. Call in his brilliant OMB director, Peter Orsag, and say, Peter, go through this and pull out the crap. Separate the wheat from the chaff, and then I'll sign the bill after they clean it up. He would look great doing that. I don't disagree with you, Chris, but again, I think it's about priorities. I mean, his priorities and your priorities may well be different, and I'm not trying to minimize the spending in this bill and the fact that, yes, in fact, as John McCain points out, uh, just as a side note, by the way, I love the return of the old John McCain, the more in sadness than anger wow. tone <laughs> that he has. But uh, wow. as, John McCain, as John McCain rightly points out, Barack Obama you guys did are cynical. say, uh, Barack I'll Obama say it again, a say broken clock trail. is right twice a day. <laughs> I don't give you lost the election. Clock, He's right on this one. A broken clock being twice a day is the philosophy that has kept me uh, employed all these years. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 100% in favor of that philosophy. <laughs> uh, so here's McCain going after President Obama on the cost of his helicopter. Your helicopter is now going to cost as much as Air Force One. I don't think that there's any more uh, graphic demonstration of how good ideas have uh, have cost uh, uh, the taxpayers an enormous amount of money. By the way, uh, I've already talked to Gates about a thorough review of the helicopter situation. The helicopter I have now seems perfectly adequate to me. Um, <laughs> of course, I've never had a helicopter before. So, you know, maybe uh, maybe I've been deprived and I I didn't know it. Nicely parried, but there you saw a first line item veto of this administration conducted Chris Eliza by John McCain. He just line itemed the helicopter right yep. then. Yeah, he, he chose a nice forum to do that in, Chris. That was after the conclusion of that fiscal responsibility summit where every reporter, <laughs> every reporter in the world was paying attention. Ah. So we thought now's the time. One quick thing about McCain that I think is fascinating. Right after the election, he seemed like he was going to be the guy who was going to be the bridge for Obama to Senate uh -huh. Republicans. All of a sudden now, though, he clearly, this is an issue he has stayed with for a long time. He has not taken up your mark from this. has long been you an mean issue of his. principle. He, exactly. And I think that he has Are gone from shocked? someone who was going... I am a little bit, Chris, Don't. because right after the election, I thought man. he was going to reach out. Don't be shocked by the sight of principle. <laughs> it's not that startling. No, anyway. I'm not shocked by principle. I'm shocked by the fact that McCain has gone from someone who could help Obama bridge the well, gap with he's... Senate Republicans to being uh, uh, the accountability in the Senate. Well, let's pray for that. He can do both. A good man can do both helpful and hurtful things at the same time. Yes? Well, look, I think the guy sees an opening. I mean, I think okay. he looks at the Senate and I says, do. Do. where is the leadership of the Republican Party? Who's bigger than me? He's and, the only man he whose has name leverage. we recognize yep, on the Republican, Republican side. Exactly Try to get right. Mitch McConnell even recognized in a police lineup or John Boehner. Nobody knows who they are. They know who Rush Limbaugh is. They know who John McCain is. John